at the time that I worked in, they they typically did not see inmates that were coming off drugs. Do you understand that prescription drug withdrawal can be life-threatening? That's correct. Narcotic or alcoholic withdrawals. Are you able to determine the difference between someone withdrawing from narcotics as opposed to someone withdrawing from a street drug? No. I asked her for her ID and it was attached to her pocket on her on her um, stripes, her uniform. Um, she had a, a bag by her bed where she'd been throwing up. And I remember her saying that uh, her stomach hurt. And I believed it to be from throwing up. Then I went on to the to do the rest of my head count. Okay. Uh, did you ask every inmate for their ID when you do a head count? Yes. So you don't just look at the ID if it's on their bunk or on their. If I can't see the ID, I ask them for their ID. So am, is it safe to assume that you couldn't see Deborah's ID and that's why you asked her for it? It wasn't on the bunk where they typically keep their IDs. It was on her, in her pocket, on her pocket. Was she awake when you first saw her? Yes, she was. Eyes open? Yes. Uh, talking? Yes, she was. Responding appropriately to your questions? Yes. Was she um, lying down or sitting up in her bed? She was lying down. Could you tell what her color was like, or was it too dark? It it was it was not dark. The first head count, ba basically, the head counts. You turn the lights on so you can see every inmate. The first head count, all the lights are on. All right. Um, I didn't notice anything abnormal about her coloration. Was she sweaty? Did you notice? No, I did not notice. Don't recall. Do you think if she were sweaty, you would recall that? Form. It's been a long time. It has been a long time, <laughs> but you seem to remember quite a bit. H how how do you account for that? Um, I guess um, with the job, you have to have a good memory. But you, you must have, have seen thousands of inmates yes, since then. Yes, I remember thousands of them too. When they come through intake again, I recall them. May not know their names, but the faces. Okay. But it's now two and a half years later, and you still remember what she said to you? A few things. Some of them are very vague. Okay. Okay, so when you asked her for her ID, I assume that she. What, showed it to you? I saw it on her pocket. Okay. Uh, if you saw it, why did you need to ask her for it? Because she was turned, well, I was looking at my clipboard, and the first place I looked would be on the bunk, and I asked her for her ID. When I looked down at her, I saw that the ID was on her pocket. Okay. Now, what kind of a bag did she have by her bed that she was throwing up in? It's a trash bag, that, plastic trash bags that we keep in the door for trash. And how do you know that she was throwing up in that bag? There was vomit in the bag. Did you look in the bag? I, yes, I saw that. Did she have the bag in a garbage can? No. The plastic bag was on the floor by her no, bunk? No, it was not. It was um, tied to her bunk. Is bunk 85 a lower bunk? I believe it was. 
And where on the bunk was this bag tied? To the bottom leg of the bunk. Did it allow the mouth of the bag to be open? Yes. And so you could see in there? Yes. You could see in the bag? Yes. There was uh, vomit in the bag? Yes. How much? Um, I don't recall how much. and. I recall seeing some at the bottom of the bag. Did you ask her about it? No, I did not. Did she tell you I've been vomiting? No, she did not. Okay. So, uh, did you ever see her vomit that evening, that night? I heard her vomiting. I did not see her vomiting. I would say more than twice. I know that the inmates around her changed her bag because they asked me for a bag and also asked me for clothing for her because she had soiled herself. And I got her sheets and a new blanket and clean stripes. Your response to that? I told her that her stomach hurt because she was throwing up and coming off of drugs. So when you went up to her, you saw she'd been throwing up and she said, my stomach hurt. You just checked her ID and went on to the next inmate? That's correct. Informed me that, uh, that the dorm was mad at her because she, was, she wouldn't be quiet. And no one could get sleep. At that time, around three or so, I uh, got the trustee and uh, some of the other inmates offered to help uh, dress her again and get her new clothing and I put her in a what we call a boat in the day room because she was hanging over her bunk and uh, the boats are a little safer that in that they don't have that far to fall if they fall off their bunks and the day room's close to where I the cage where I sat so it was uh, you know, as far as her keeping or uh, bothering me or anything, that was that wouldn't bother me since I was going to be up all day, all night anyway. So she didn't bother me, and I'm sure the inmates could still hear her. But you know, she finally calmed down after she got new clothing and bedding, and I I believe uh, Beverly offered her fluids also. Is it your understanding that she had defecated in bed? I believe so. Did Beverly tell you that? No, not specifically. And how is it that you believe that she defecated in bed as opposed to vomited or urinated? Because she asked me for a change of uh, pants and underwear. Uh, did you then go over to look at Deborah Brilliard after learning that she had soiled herself? I went over there with uh, Beverly and asked two other inmates to volunteer to help move her. Had uh, Deborah Brilliard's clothes been changed at that point? Yes. So when Beverly Fleming came to you and asked for a change of clothing, you let her, do you, do you have to give that to her or she access it herself? I got it out of the closet for her. I gave him to her. While she was changing her, I was getting a bag for her soil clothes because I assumed that I had to put him in a yellow bag because I assumed she had uh, defecated herself. Was she moving at all? Yes, she was. In what way? Like squirming in the bed. She looked uncomfortable? Yes. You thought she was in pain? I don't know. Well, I think you just, you just told me that when she was holding her stomach. You thought she was in pain? Yes. Okay. Was she speaking? She was just moaning. Was she uh, moaning very loudly? I didn't think so. 
Was it constant? No, there were periods where, where she wasn't. Had the moaning begun before her clothes were changed? Yes. When did the moaning begin? I don't know when it began. She was moaning when I came on shift. Oh, now you didn't tell us that. You, you, you told us that your initial encounter, she said her stomach hurt and that was, that was it. So well, she was moaning while she was holding her stomach. Did you hear her moaning when you first came on duty or did you hear that when you did your initial head count and got to her bunk? It was kind of loud when I, before I started my head count, so I guess when I first heard her was during the head count. You thought the moaning was part of the kicking process? Yes. But you'd never had any training from the MCSO on that, had you? No. And you weren't able to determine the difference between someone coming off prescription drugs which could be a life-threatening situation and someone coming off street drugs, correct? That's correct. Okay.